Iceland transports about 5,000 tons of fresh fish to the US every year by air, all of it by air. If it was transported by sea, we would save about $10 million. But it takes too long, and the fish spoils on the way. East Kristallar, in collaboration with Orv Genetics, are bringing to the market a food additive for sub-zero storage of fresh food without it freezing, and then thereby increasing the shelf life of the food. So if we succeed in our intentions, the Icelandic fishing industry, as an example, could benefit nicely from our product. The problem with freezing food is that it changes the texture and taste of the food. The food loses water and nutrition, and thereby overall weight of the food is lost during the freezing thaw cycle. And it causes freezer burns and spoilage of the food over long storage periods. Formation of ice crystals are to blame for all of these problems. Ice structuring proteins inhibit growth of ice crystals. So if you add these ice structuring proteins to the food, you lower the freezing temperature of the food, and ice crystals in frozen food are smaller. And all of this without changing the taste of the food in any way. The idea originated in ORF Genetics. And ORF Genetics will handle research and development and production of the product. And East Kristallar, founded by ORF Genetics, will be the exclusive product marketing company for all ice structuring products produced, developed and produced by Orf Genetics. And then East Kristall will sell these products into all applicable markets. Now the applications are then increased shelf life of fresh food, better storage of frozen food, which means better taste and texture after freezing, less weight loss of the food after a freeze-thaw cycle, and less spoilage of the food over the long run. Texture improvement of ice cream is another application. Unilever is the only company in the world that has ice structuring proteins in their products. They have this in low-fat ice cream, where they add in these ice structuring proteins to get the same texture and feel of the ice cream as if it was normal ice cream with normal fat content. And the final application, cell cryopreservation. Cell scientists all over the world freeze their cells for long-time storage, including ice structuring proteins in the freezing process results in better results in recovery cells when they are thrown out to be used again. So we will be focusing on four primary markets. Obtaining license for the food additives is easiest in the US. So we will be for the food market exclusively focusing on the US. The seafood market in the US, both fresh and frozen, is about $17 billion. The frozen dough market in the US is about $6 billion. The US ice cream market is about $10 billion. And then the cell cryopreservation market, we will there be going after the global market as there is no license needed for going into this research market. So why now? Growing tanks of engineered bacteria and yeast is very costly and the products that come out of it would be outside the margins of the food industry. But this is the conventional technology used today if you were going to make these kind of proteins. Engineered barley, on the other hand, can be grown in field at very low cost. So if we succeed in our development, we will have products that are within the margins of the food industry. 
The team is myself, Dr. Haukunat Birgisson. I did my PhD in biotechnology in the University of Lund and my MBA in the University of Reykjavik. And my teammate, Dr. Jonas Björsson, who did his PhD in molecular biology in the University of Lund, actually, as well. So going forward, we are in the process of mapping out the regulatory pathway in the US to the food industry. And we are also selecting the eye structuring proteins that we are going to be developing. And already next month, the development of the protein will be initiated. Then in August next year, production of adequate protein amounts will then be confirmed. So this is a big milestone for us to see if our system is yielding and giving us enough protein for the business case to be viable. The technical data that we have so far gives us reason to be very optimistic about succeeding. So once that is confirmed, we can right away start selling into the cell cryopreservation market and get some modest revenue from that direction. But simultaneously, we will turn our attention to the big fish, the food market in the US. So their investments will be needed as we will be starting the process of licensing for the protein for the US food market, rigorous business development, into this market in these different kind of food spaces in the US and production scale up, which means scaling up the barley cultivation and putting in place infrastructure for processing the barley and, uh, and isolating the proteins. So by August next year, we should be in a position to start working towards lowering cost and simplifying processes for the food industry and reducing food waste in the world. Thank you.